Hi, my name is David Ditter and I will present to you the findings of our ICASP 2020 paper, a multiphase gamma tone filter bank for speech separation via TASNET. This is a research work together with Timo Gergmann from the Signal Processing Group at the University of Hamburg. In this talk, we will focus on the role of the encoder in the TASNET network architecture. At the core of this presentation will be the question, can it be useful to use a deterministic instead of a learned encoder in the TASNET approach? In our evaluation part, we will show that our proposed multiphase gamma tone filter bank is able to match the performance of the learned filter bank in TASNET, while at the same time allowing to reduce the number of filters. So let's start with the presentation. First, let me introduce you to the problem of speech separation. In this graphic, you can see multiple persons talking into a microphone. For some real world use cases, it might be necessary to extract the source signals of each speaker after the recording. Such a system, which we would call a speech separation system, could help us with use cases like video captioning, meeting transcription, or it could be very helpful, for example, in hearing aids. The conditions under that we want to solve the problem is that for once, we do not know the characteristics of the speakers ahead. And furthermore, in this case, we care about the monaural speech separation. So we only have a single microphone channel. A common approach to the speech separation problem is the mask-based approach, which we see in this graphic here. It is used by um, systems like deep clustering, permutation invariant training, and also by TASNET, which is at the core of this research work. In the mask-based approach, we start out with the mixed speech signal, as it is recorded by the microphone, which we saw in the graphic on the slide before. This mixture signal is fed into an encoder. For deep clustering and permutation invariant training, for example, this would often be a short-time Fourier transform. For TASNET, this would be a real-valued filter bank. The encoder then gives us the encoded mixture signal, and we feed this into a separation network. The separation network gives out a mask for each speaker. This mask is multiplied ele element-wise with the encoded signal for each speaker. So then we have an encoded signal for each speaker, at least an estimate. This estimate is then fed into the decoder. For deep clustering and permutation invariant training, this would often be the inverse STFT. For TASNET, this would be a real-valued filter bank again. And the output of the decoder then gives us the signals uh, for each speaker in the time domain. At the core of this presentation is the following question. Can it be useful to use a deterministic filter bank instead of a learned filter bank as the encoder for TASNET? Just quite recently, the role of the encoder and decoder of TASNET has gained some attention in the research community, as you can see in the list of papers um, on the bottom of this slide, which all deal with this topic. And we are also happy to shine a light uh, on this interesting research topic. So we want to try to give answers to the question that we just posed. And we do this by introducing a deterministic filter bank that we use as the encoder in TASNET. We call our proposal the multiphase gamma tone filter bank. To motivate this filter bank, we show you the following graphic here. On the left hand side, you can see the filter bank that is learned by TASNET. On the very left hand side, you can see its time domain representation. So each row here depicts another filter in the filter bank. Right to that, you can see the frequency domain representation of the learned filter bank. So again, each row here depicts a filter in the frequency domain, uh, or better to say in the magnitude frequency domain. This is now sorted by the um, peak frequency in the frequency domain. And this shows us that there are more filters learned which um, have center frequencies in the lower frequency region. And there are fewer 
um, filters learned, which have center frequencies in the higher frequency region. So this inspired us to come up with an auditory filter bank for um, TASNET as a deterministic filter bank. Because auditory filter banks, like the gamma-tone filter bank, they also have this property that the center frequencies are um, distributed logarithmically on the frequency um, scale. A second property for our proposed filter bank is that for the same center frequency, it has multiple filters with different phase shifts. And this is something that was also inspired by the learned filter bank of TASNET. So for TASNET, we also see this structure that, for example, in lower frequency regions, we see filters that share the same center frequency, but have different phase shifts. So we integrated this concept into our proposed multiphase gamma tone filter bank, which I will explain in detail now. So as stated before, we want to make use of an auditory filter bank and we use the gamma tone filter bank. For this, let's just quickly recap what a gamma tone filter looks like in this filter bank. Um, important parameters for this filter formula are the center frequency, the phase shift, and the filter bandwidth parameter, which is dependent on the center frequency. For more details on this, please have a look at the paper itself. To construct an auditory gamma tone filter bank, we do not only need gamma tone filters, but we also need to know the concept of equivalent rectangular bandwidth. Experiments on the human auditory systems show that um, the center frequencies in the human auditory filters are placed equidistantly on the so-called ERB scale which formula is shown here on this slide. The important thing to note here is that the ERB scale is a logarithmic scale. Inspired by the auditory gamma tone filter bank, the parameters for our proposed multiphase gamma tone filter bank are the center frequencies um, are uh, spaced with a distance of one to the nearest neighbors on the ERB scale, just as in the common auditory gamma tone filter bank concept. The lowest center frequency in our proposed filter bank is 100 Hz and the upper limit is set to 4000 Hz and the upper limit is defined basically by our sampling rate, which is 8000 Hz. This setup leads to 24 different center frequencies within this specified frequency range. As stated before, we introduce multiple phases per center frequency in our MPGTF. The number of phase shifts per center frequency is determined by the total number of filters, which is varied in our experiments. The phase shifts per center frequency are placed equidistantly on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. For more details, have a look at the Python code for the MPGTF under GitHub. Now, before we come to the results, let me explain the experimental setup. We use a TASNET implementation with the hyperparameters of TASNET set as proposed in the conf TASNET paper referenced here. The filter length in the encoder is always set to 16 samples at 8 kHz sampling rate, which refers to 2 milliseconds in the time domain. The number of filters is varied in our experiments and the actual number of filters used will be shown in the result tables. The dataset that we used for training and testing is the commonly used WSJ0 MIX2 dataset. Now let's have a look at the results. In the table at hand, we show the SI SNR improvements on the WSJ0 MIX2 dataset for TASNET with the number of filters at 512. We show different settings for the encoder and decoder. So learned in this table means that we have the classical TASNET setting with a learned encoder. And um, MPGTF means that the encoder is our proposed multiphase gamma tone filter bank. So if we um, compare the first and second row of this table, we can see that on the test set, we 
slightly outperform the baseline approach with our MPGTF by 0.5 dB. So what you should take away here is that a fully learned system does not always have to be better than a, a partly deterministic system as we are able to slightly outperform the fully learned system. If we now have a look at the third row in this table, we can see that when we replace the decoder with the multiphase gamma tone filter bank pseudo inverse, then um, our performance slightly decreases, but it's still the same performance as we had with the fully learned system. And what has improved in some way is that we have less overfitting on the training set. So as you can see, our performance on the training set is lower but the performance on the test set is um, the same as in the baseline approach. So we conclude that this shows um, that the last row is less prone to overfitting. Now let's have a look at the second and last result table of this talk. It again shows SI as an R improvements on the WSJ0 mix2 test set. Now for different values of the number of filters n. In this table, the decoder is always set to learned as in the classical testnet. Only the encoder is varied here between learned as in classical testnet um, and the multiphase gamma tone filter bank proposed by us. We want to make two points here. The first one is that the multiphase gamma tone filter bank allows to decrease the number of filters to 128 without uh, loss of performance. This is, can be seen in these two table rows here. So um, for 512 filters, we see a performance of 15.9 dB SI SNRI. And if we go down with the number of filters to 128, um, we can still match the performance, even get slightly better. This is not the case for the baseline approach. Um, for the classical learned TASNET, we see that the performance slightly decreases if we go with the number of filters from 512 to 128. The other important point to see here is that multiple phases per center frequency do increase performance when using our gamma tone filter bank. So um, in the lowest setting where we have the least amount of um, phases per center frequency, um, we have a performance of 14.4 um, dB. But um, if we go up to 128 filters, where we have um, multiple phases per center frequency, in that case we have we have a drastically better performance, and this shows the need for using multiple phases per center frequency, as we have proposed. To conclude this talk, let's go back to the question that we posed in the beginning. Can it be useful to use a deterministic filter bank instead of a learned filter bank as the encoder for TASNET? Our experiments show that yes, it can be useful. Our proposed deterministic MPGTF matches the performance of a fully learned filter bank while at the same time the number of filters in the encoder can be reduced and also overfitting on the training data is reduced. We'd like to thank you for watching our video on speech separation and filter banks, and we are happy about any questions on the topic. Thank you.